Hey, this is going to be a video about series circuits. It's really the first kind of circuit you should learn when you're learning about electricity and Ohm's law. Uh, please watch the first video in, in my series. I put the link at the beginning of this video. And there's a Google Doc that you can open. I placed the link in the description. Uh, that too has a lot of the rules that I'm, I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to assume that you have watched that video and you're looking at that Google Doc while you watch this. So here's a series circuit. We have two loads, 100 ohm and 47 ohm. We're going to apply 5 volts. <clears throat> now there's some rules with a series circuit. There's only one path for current to flow. Obviously, current cannot split off anywhere else in this circuit. So the current would be the same through that whole circuit. No matter where I'd measure it, it would be the same value. To solve total resistance, we just add the loads up, the ohm values. Uh, if we add up all the voltage drops, and by voltage drops I mean how much voltage is each of these loads using. When you add up all the voltage drops, it should equal the total supply voltage, or really close to it. If we add loads to a series circuit, the current drops because there is more resistance. And a little rule, or, or sort of a definition that I learned a long time ago, and makes sense to me, is power equals watts, and that is heat dissipated in a circuit. So I would say watts equals heat, heat dissipated. And if you add up all your wattages from each of your loads, how many watts the dish use plus how many watts the dish use, it's going to equal the total wattage in the circuit. And that applies for series or parallel circuits. Quick reminder about the breadboards that all breadboards have rows that are tied together. In this particular breadboard, these two, two do not jump this uh, barrier. And if you were to connect the load up like this, it's like putting in a jumper, you would short out the load. So here is your series circuit. We're going to focus on that first connection, going to uh, J1. And then we'd highlight our drawing. We made that connection. And next connection, anywhere on the breadboard. And then we highlight that. Now we're going to land R2 to that same row, which connects these two. See that by the highlighting. And then we're going to land the other side of R2 to any point on the board and highlight that area. Now we're going to calculate total resistance. And here are our rows, voltage, resistance, current, and wattage. E stands for electromotive force or voltage. R is resistance measured in ohms. I stands for intensity measured in amps. And P is power measured in watts. To solve total resistance, we just add our loads. 100 plus 47 is 147. We're going to apply 5 volts to the circuit. And then we're going to look at our wheel. Now our wheel says that we can solve for any unknown value if we have two known values. Well, looking at this bottom, bottom of this column and the bottom of this column, which are our totals, supply voltage, total resistance, what it means is I can solve for this unknown and this unknown. I just need to find the part of the wheel that has the two known values available. So, for instance, if I want to solve for total amperage, I can use power, the square root of power divided by resistance. Well, I don't have power, so I can't use that. Power divided by voltage. Again, I don't have power, so I can't use that. Voltage divided by resistance. Voltage divided by resistance. So I can use this one to solve for amps. Now, if I did want to solve for total wattage, I could use voltage times current, but I don't have current, so I can't use that. Resistance times current squared, again, I don't have current. Or voltage squared divided by resistance. I do have that. Let's start with the easy one first. 
this is kind of the easier one out of our choices, E over R. And it's from our basic wheel that I discussed in my first video. Well, 5 volts divided by 147 ohms is 0 0.034 amps. Now, if I want to solve for wattage, I have voltage and current, so I might as well go ahead and solve total wattage. 5 times this current, 0 0.034, total voltage times total current equals total wattage. Here's one of our rules. Current is the same in a series circuit. So that means this point 034 flows through both loads equally. And here are our two loads in our series circuit. Next, we'd like to solve for the voltage drops. We want to know how much voltage this load used and how much did this one use out of our supply voltage. The easiest formula to use is I times R. So we can take I, which is the same, right, in the whole circuit, times this resistance equals this voltage drop. And here it is here. And same thing for the next load. This many amps times this many ohms equals this much voltage used. And notice that I rounded it up. You can do that. When, when you're that close, it's okay to round it up by one decimal place. As it turns out, if we add these two voltage drops, it does equal our supply voltage. So we know that we did these formulas correctly. <clears throat> well, I can solve my individual wattages. How many watts did each load use? By using any one of these three formulas to solve for watts. So I could use E squared over R because I have those values. Or I could use this one. But this one is the easiest. It's also the easiest to remember if you can remember the word pi. P equals I times E. Power equals current times voltage. Same thing here. We, it's just reversed. Voltage times current. Same as current times voltage. So we apply that formula and solve for wattage in both, um, both loads, and then we're going to check that. We're going to add our wattages together and see if it equals our calculated total wattage. Again, if we round it up, it sure does. So we know that we did this correctly. <clears throat> 